Yo, how's it going guys? So Zephra just won the recent Factory Cup and I have here the deck list that they used. I don't know how to pronounce the name because it's not in like Latin letters. Apparently you pronounce it, which I can't say. Um, I found their Twitter, which is called Abuse Vanity. I'll link all the stuff I find down low and the deck list. And um, when they sub they got the deck list submitted, uh, everybody in the comments was asking uh, for some replays. So I decided to try this list out. Uh, I like uh, how it looks a lot more than the recent OCG Zephyr list we've seen with like all the Saki stuff. Uh, this looks like it really consistently prints bodies, um, puts up protection, and then goes into Aurora Dawn. Uh, it has some good follow up as well. Uh, like your late game is pretty crazy if you manage your resources properly, which um, I didn't. Uh, and I'll be sure to point that out as well. But this feels like uh, something similar to this has a lot of potential. Now, this is slightly altered. Uh, the Factory Cup seems to be a best of three format uh, because they did submit a side deck. Uh, I just added Maxi to the list and I don't own the Satellite Warrior. I see where it comes up. Uh, it comes up quite a bit actually from what I've tested, uh, but I, I wasn't running it. So sucks for me, I guess. All right. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's hop straight into the games. All right, so I just want to show off some possible combo lines and variations and point out uh, mistakes that I make and uh, ways to play uh, more optimally than what I did. So here we're just going to put down the scales. We already have the Zafranu in hand, so we're going to send the Zafraxi here. Uh, we're going to make sure to chain block everything from Ash here by using the Zephraxi. Uh, they have the Impulse. Uh, I could Ash this, but I am afraid that they have uh, something like uh, Maxi still. Uh, this also just turns off Imperm if they summon this. I was expecting them to summon the, the thing that draws two. So I would have just held Ash for that as well. Here we're just going to go into Electromite. We're going to be uh, setting the Synthes face down. That's the target that you set off of the DJJ. And what we're going to do here is we're going to grab another copy and clear our scale. The Ignis Phoenix just prints another body here. And this can let us get access to our Valence Field spells. We're going to pitch the motorbike. I don't need it, but... Uh, well, I can't use it because I have a spell in the graveyard, I think. But... I just wanted it in the graveyard for Axel here. So we get to make a Baron here. Uh, it's kind of late, I guess, but if they were holding like an Ash for Roradon or something, uh, spoiler, this is what we call foreshadowing, unfortunately, um, for a different game. Uh, this will help us beat it. So they can't uh, imperm anything, so it's off Lightning Storm evenly as well. The DJJ gets to flip your face down guy to search another body. And here we're going to go for a Promethean for uh, the Electromite. Now, I don't need to do all of this. I could have just gone into Auradon here. I was just trying this out. Uh, this will give you Elf for more targeting protection. So like they couldn't Veiler after all this time. I, I don't know. Not really worth it. Uh, also, Guitar could have summoned a guy from the graveyard, but we would run out of zones for the Aurora down here. Yeah. So this line is kind of overkill. I prefer to have it for follow-up later on. Uh, it'll really help with recovery if you still just have the Electromite and stuff. You're already protected by the Baron and then can just go into your Aurora down lines here. Just going to go for uh, Denglong. Uh, that's going to go into the Boral Savage. We're going to grab a Negate off of this. The Zephyr Providence turns into another Negate. The Boral Savage, of course, is a negate. The Baron is a negate. So that's already four. And we could also make Chao Feng here. If I grab the... Where's this guy at? The other... Symphonic. Uh, this one right here, this guy's a, a tuner. So we could have used that together with the Zafranu. And then gone into our Chao Feng. Uh, this would 
turn them off of Earth Monster effects, which uh, is not relevant right now. Uh, where is it here? You cannot activate the effects of monsters with the same original attribute as the Yang Zings used for the Synchro. So we only have Earth. Uh, this will turn off Maxi, which doesn't matter, Verna Selfs, which aren't real cards, and it turns off uh, a bit of the uh, Super Heavy engine. So it's pretty good there. But the real purpose of making Chao Feng, if you can, is uh, when it gets popped, you get to search for a tuner. Uh, this guy gets popped, you get to search for a Yang Zing or Zephra spell trap, which can also help with follow up. But the Chao Feng lets you search for an Ash or a Veiler, so you get even more disruption that way. And uh, if you use your resources properly, you either don't get your board broken and don't need to find follow up, or you can just keep some in the hand as well. So uh, I didn't see the line when I was trying this out, so we don't, we don't, we don't do it. Yeah. And we make sure to use the Baron to pop our field spell um, because we don't want them using the using the field spell to push our guys back. Uh, the this one right here is the one that pushes them back. Um, and if they activated their rescue ace field spell, uh, it would turn on the Valence field spell that I have uh, to out one of my monsters. So I don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, I just pop mine. All right, and uh, since we have four negates, it doesn't matter. They have uh, a push and an extender, and we just negate both of them. An important thing to note here is we did use the Zephyr Divine Strike, because if we use the nine pillars to pop the um, Zephranu on anything that isn't chain link two, it will miss timing. All right, here we have another pretty nice hand. We get to go first. And we're going to lead with the field spell to just turn off Imperm and stuff. You're going to use Zephyrath as the high scale. This is what you normally do, and then you send the Zephranu here. So we're going to be chain blocking uh, the Ash Blossom with the Majesty. Now, this is probably a mistake uh, because I either have to get rid of Valor, which kind of sucks because it's a free disruption, or I pitch the Oracle, which turns off my Super Heavies. Um, I'll get to that in one second. Um, if they disrupt the Zephranu, it keeps me off of a negate. So basically, it just traded for the Ash Blossom, and I don't really care because I can still keep playing. So I should have just not used the Majesty here. This was like hoping for um, yeah, them to just be an idiot and Ash Blossom it. So we get to clear our scales here. And this is why it sucks that we pitch the field spell, because Electromite here can actually just search for Kashi. We would not have any spells in the graveyard because I didn't pitch any. Uh, and then we can just do uh, the full super heavy combo here. But we can't because I screwed up. So we're going to have to go for an alternative combo line. Uh, I mean, I didn't screw up. This was all for uh, teaching purposes. Yes, yes, for more lines. So we're going to use the DJJ here to set... The guy face down and then link off into barricade board blocker i'm gonna go for a roared on here and you can actually tribute off uh the synthesis here even though it's face down so that's what we're gonna go for and our opponent was toggling off the entire game and we get ash blossomed so that was a mistake this is why we should have definitely gone for the super heavy line here because that lets us make baron before committing into the roradon and if they have a negate anywhere along that line, we can probably still find a way to get to Roradon. So this uh, kind of devolves into a bit of a grind game. Uh, they have the Moye here, so we're going to Valor it. Uh, I was kind of nervous here for a bit uh, because I didn't read the spell. Uh, this says the turn player can target one effect monster in the opponent's main monster zone. So they can't actually push back the token to out my Divine Strike. And we have a negate for the long one here. So there are two cards in hand. I'm going to swing over a token. And this is where I'm really sad because uh, we actually can't make anything here. So we committed through our Electromite and our Barricade Board Blocker already. And then we got negated, which really sucks. Um, we should have definitely had Baron, right? And if we get Disrupted or something, we would have just not made the Borg. And that would let me... Um, link some stuff off here maybe and um, we at least have a kind of chance it's still hard because they have different names but with this extra deck all these guys actually need effect monsters or level twos which we don't have 
Uh, but the Barricade Borg could have been one with our normal summon, and then we go into Elf, and then Elf can bring back our Electromite, and we can keep playing from there. So, long story short, uh, don't overcommit your resources that early. So we're just going to pass here. There's no point. Any of these guys just get beat over by Moye. And unfortunately, they have Birth and just normal summon the Unicorn. And they're going to banish our Zephrenu for God knows what reason. I have no clue. Maybe they were afraid of it. And here we have Chronograph. Now, I could have normal summon the Zephraxi and then use the field spell to push this back. That would turn off the Unicorn. It would turn off the Birth. And then we could scale Majesty and Chronograph, pend one from the extra deck and probably just play from there. That would have been a lot smarter. Um, I forgot though. That depends kind of spells for a birth. So we actually lose um, Electromite here, which is kind of awkward. Uh, however, we still get to Synchro here because we didn't commit our normal summon early uh, because we didn't think it would matter. We actually get to go into the Baron here. We're going to stack a low scale on top of our deck with Oracle for next turn. Uh, and then we're going to push back the Unicorn. This also turns off Birth, turns off Unicorn. Um, and then we're going to beat over his guy and then pop the Field Spell. Because if he summons anything, uh, he can use the Field Spell and it'll force the Baron. Alright, so this game actually turns out fairly interesting, even though I do get to resolve the Max Seat. Um, I'm going to use it on Poplar Effect to Special Summon itself, so I can guarantee you the draw. I'm going to grab the Field Spell. And they're actually going to Talons here. Now, the correct option is the Valence Field Spell. Because if I activate this, it will replace their Field Spell. And they never get to summon out the Flamberge. And uh, that really sucks for them. Especially if they want to go into like an IP here. Uh, which I feel like they should have gone for IP first. Uh, and then hand ripped. But yeah, they ripped this. Uh, they realized they read the card. Uh, but I have like super full combo anyways. So we're fine here. We even draw the Ash in case they have a max seat. We're going to lead with the super heavy line. It's very nice that we drew the motorbike because if we count the summons, that's two, three. This lets me get it straight away here. Four and five. And now suddenly the game passes priority over to them. So I know they have Nibiru. This means I'm going to be respecting Nibiru for the rest of this replay. Now we're going to go ahead and use Oracle to search a Zephranu and just use the effect of the Kalshi to rescale. We could have searched for Zephrath instead and then scale the Zephrath, put the Zephranu into the extra deck, and then we get to summon out a Zephranu into the EMZ. So we have another main monster zone free, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, at this point, you can see again how Satellite Warrior uh, would have gone kind of nuts here. But I don't have it. So it's not going to do anything. Uh, here, I know that they have the nib. So I'm just going to go for Electromite. And I'm going to go into the Princess line, which is a mistake uh, in hindsight. But also, now that I know this, I wouldn't do it again. Because they're going to actually go spell this. And this is where it gets super awkward. Because I have no way of removing the Promethean Princess from the field. I can't make Elf. Um... I can't make any of the other guys because none of them are fires. I don't think it's worth running the Amblo Whale or anything. So Bell hurts a lot and I can't negate it because I know they have Nib in their hand because of the triggers, right? So we're going to have to Baron Pop it, which is like horribly inefficient. And now we're going to summon out the DJJ. Just get the free body for follow up because we can no longer get to Aurora Dawn. We've already spent our normal summon and everything. And we're actually going to go ahead and synchro into a Boral Savage. This is going to get me another negate. And this guy gets really big. So we can actually be over the Snake Eyes. And they want me to use my one spot's face up on the field Baron here. Uh, because I could have, it, when this resolves, just use the Boral with my once per turn negate. And I'll just negate it for free. Because I'm going to have three counters on this. So we're going to beat over this. It can't trigger because there's nothing in the grave yet be over the Snash here specifically because it has an effect to summon out the Flamberge, but Poplar on the field does absolutely nothing. 
And now we're finally going to use the Providence to search for our counter trap. So we're on two negates and an Ash Blossom. We have decent follow up. Um, yeah, we're just going to use Baron here. Probably could have kept it for next turn. This guy actually does nothing at all. So I probably should have just waited. See what I draw. Maybe get like a tuner or something. But yeah, we're going to use the Divine Strike here to negate this. Uh, if we use the Boral Savage to negate it, uh, it would stay on the field and get to use its effect again. And you could potentially send the Flamburst and that would be really obnoxious. So we're going to use the Counter Trap to just clear the body as well. All right, so at this point, the game is basically just over. Um, we find Lethal here, so I'm just going to show off another nice way to dismantle a bit of this board. Where we're just going to go for a Beyond the Pendulum after fixing our scales here. And we're going to get to Zafranu. Pop these guys. I screwed up my mental math. I thought I could go for a Boxia line. But Boxia only works off of exactly um, the Motorbike or O-line. We should get back off Elf in the lines that you make it. So yeah, we swing for Lethal here. All right, guys, I hope these replays helped you guys uh, understand some of the combo lines and what the deck is trying to achieve. Uh, you're basically just trying to make an early negate, go into Word on, and then end on four to five disruptions. Chaofeng, searching the hand trap would be your fifth. Uh, and of course, anything else you draw. Uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting, unique interactions with the cards in this deck. And uh, you should probably read those and practice a lot. Uh, just trying out test hands and everything and my biggest tip would be to not overcommit your resources early on you have a lot of ways to just search for follow-up and then if you end on three disruptions and full follow-up for the next turn that's also very good uh, probably a lot better than four disruptions and then not having any way to keep playing and then your opponent just beats you on turn four so uh, be aware of that uh, you saw how hard I got punished for overcommitting into the princess a few times. And yeah, uh, if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to respond. All right, see you.